Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation on the Venus return chart. So this is part of my planetary return series of videos that I am putting on my YouTube channel. And there's a playlist right there on my YouTube channel that says planetary returns if you want to go and check out any of the other videos on planetary returns, or just click the link in the description box below, and it'll take you there. And so the purpose of this video is to discuss your Venus return chart. And I will be discussing how to analyze the Venus return, what it represents. And I'm going to use several of my Venus return charts to illustrate the symbolism of how useful and interesting they are to look at as an add-on tool. Again, this is planetary return charts are another tool in your toolbox as an astrologer, as an astrology student. So it's not the be all end all. I've said this before, the most important planetary return chart is the solar return chart. And that video is going to be coming up very soon. <laughs> so you're going to see why that is the most important chart. But the other personal returns, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and then even your Jupiter return, which happens every 12 years, these are useful charts to look at because they give you an idea as a standalone chart, they function and they show you the potential for all of the matters that are ruled by that planetary return that you're looking at, the planet that you're looking at. So today we're focusing on Venus. Venus is the planet of love, the planet of beauty and happiness. It's the planet of aesthetics and it is the planet of money. It is the key financial planet. So your Venus return chart each year should give you a pretty good idea about themes connected to those Venus ruled matters for you. And your Venus return chart lasts for about a year. And just like with any other personal planet, sometimes Venus goes retrograde. And if it does go retrograde and you are born at a time when you're going to have Venus retrograde in your sign, it's possible that you will have three Venus return charts for that particular cycle. So that does happen occasionally. You want to look for that. Not all signs, not all Venus signs will go retrograde though. So most often your Venus return chart happens once and it lasts for about one year. And just like with all of the other planetary returns, there are some general guidelines that you're going to use to apply as you read a Venus return chart. You're always going to start with the natal chart and look at the condition of that planet in the natal chart. And then you go to the return chart and read it as a standalone chart. And then you're going to look at the connections between your birth chart and your return chart, because that offers amazing nuggets of information. And then we'll discuss also how to time certain triggers for when things might happen in any planetary return chart. So if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. My name is Maria De Simone. I am a professional astrologer and you can learn more about me and my work at insightfulastrology.com. If you are an astrology student and you're interested in taking one of my upcoming planetary returns workshops, you can get on the mailing list to be notified when the next workshop opens up. These are workshops that I teach every so often during the year that focuses on all of these planetary returns. And what I do for my students is we use your charts, your planetary returns. So you learn with your own charts and it's a great fun workshop. All you have to do is understand astrology up to the level of aspect analysis, and then you are ready for that workshop. Now, this is a great book by Celestia. And if you are going to study planetary returns, I, I definitely recommend identifying planetary triggers by Celestial as one of your texts to refer to because she gives great guidelines about all planetary returns. And I often refer to her book and, and I use a lot of her guidelines in my own practice. So now we're going to get into the, the inner workings of a Venus return chart. I'm going to share my screen in a minute and show you first my birth chart. And then we're going to go through several Venus return charts. I thought it would be fun to look at a few from the past 
And then we'll look at the one that I am celebrating today. Today is my Venus return actually. So we're gonna look at the chart that will occur later on tonight and will be in motion for the next year of my life connected to Venus ruled matters. And we'll make some fun predictions and then see what happens. This is always fun, right? So I'm using myself as a guinea pig and as the teaching tool in all of the planetary return videos in, in this series. So what else did I wanna say about uh, the Venus return chart? Okay, so not every year is going to be, oh my gosh, there's so much important stuff happening uh, with the Venus return chart. Don't assume that it is going to be filled with life-changing information every single year. It's not, because not every year is a huge monumental Venus year for you. And remember, your bigger transits and progressions and solo arcs are gonna really tell the story about what's going on in your Venus world. So the Venus return chart is just an added bonus chart to look at that can tie it all together, that ties these bigger cycles together for you. And a Venus return chart might be more important for you if your chart is ruled by Venus or if your sun sign is ruled by Venus. So if you have the ascendant or the sun sign in Taurus or Libra, then a Venus return chart might be more noteworthy for you to pay attention to. And on that note, I'm going to share my screen and show you my birth chart and let's explore the condition of Venus. So that's the first thing that you wanna do always when you are looking at any return chart is you gotta figure out, well, what is that planet doing in the natives chart? So for me, I have Venus in Aries in the 12th house and Venus is uh, pretty dynamically aspected in my chart. It is opposite Pluto. All right, so forgive my juvenile drawing skills, but this is Zoom drawing for you. And I also have a tense square to both Saturn and Mars. And I have a trine to the moon and Neptune. Okay, so these are, are the aspects that Venus makes in my chart. And that's something useful to keep in mind. In my birth chart, Venus rules the second house and the seventh house. And this is also something that you wanna keep in mind because everybody's Venus is different. Even if you have Venus in the same sign as a hundred people, that particular Venus placement in everybody's chart is going to rule different houses besides being the general significator of love and money and values and aesthetics, okay? So in my chart, since my chart does have Aries rising, my chart happens to follow the natural zodiac, which makes Venus the ruler of the second house of money possessions and self-worth and the seventh house of partnership and commitments. Okay, so Venus is a busy planet in my chart for sure. And I am a Taurus sun. So my sun sign is ruled by Venus as well. And so love and money matters are complicated. Let's just leave it at that. I'm not gonna go into a whole analysis. It would take an hour just to do that with all this energy here. So we're gonna say it's complicated. <laughs> it's always going to be complicated. It's not bad or good, but it is dynamic for sure. Okay. So that's my natal Venus. Now I thought that I would start with a Venus return that happened to be the most significant and busy Venus return period for me in my entire life when it comes to finance, when it comes to money. I figured that would be an important, good learning tool because obviously this year was a significant Venus year and the Venus return chart certainly symbolizes it. 
And so I'm going to start with this Venus return chart, which occurred in 2018. And the reason why I chose it is because this Venus return chart happens to be the time period between this Venus return and then my next one in 2019. It is the time period between when I was uh, looking for a house and I had, and I bought a house, I closed on a house. I had to move out of my ex-husband's home, which I had lived in with my children for, I think it was 21 or 22 years. It was, you know, I was there for a very long time. So this was a significant situation. And not only did I buy my own house, but I did extensive renovations on this home, which obviously cost a lot of money. And I also received my divorce settlement, even though I got divorced in 2011, the divorce was finalized in 2011, the terms of my settlement indicated that I would not be able to get my settlement until I moved out of the marital home. And I didn't have to move out of the marital home until my daughter was 18 years old. So it was a long delay for me to get my, um, my divorce settlement. So there was a lot going on that year with finances, for sure. And, and love too, which I'll, I'll get to, but this chart is more about the finance stuff. So let's take a look here. We see that Venus is in the fifth house, conjunct Mercury. Now, initially you're gonna look at Venus in the fifth house and you're gonna think, whoa, this is all about fifth house matters. It's all about love and pleasure and children possibly, okay? Because the first thing you're gonna do is analyze the placement of Venus in your Venus return chart. And it is in the fifth house in this particular chart. But the fifth house also rules uh, speculation and you're going to see how that ties in to the home purchase, okay? I'll get to it, I promise. So interesting. So Mercury is conjunct Venus. Now, let's look at the condition, other condition of Mercury. Mercury is square Saturn. And Venus, I'm sorry, Venus and, and Mercury are square Saturn. That seems very discouraging at first, doesn't it? When you, when you hear about Venus square Saturn, all you hear about is limitations in money and love and blockages and delays and frustration and disappointments. And if you go back to my natal chart, you'll, you may remember that I was born with Venus square Saturn. That's one of my natal aspects. So a natal aspect is being triggered. It's being woken up in the Venus return chart. Now, my natal Saturn is in Cancer, not Capricorn, but I still have a square between Venus and Saturn in my birth chart. So that's being woken up. Um, Venus rules in this chart, the seventh house and the 12th house. So we're going to keep that in mind. Now, the seventh house is marriage and partnership. It is anyone you have a legal relationship with. Seventh house also rules your ex-husbands or ex-wives. Twelfth house is that house of secrets and sorrow or spirituality. It's under the surface. Everything is really within, okay? So that could become important in this Venus return storyline during this time period in my life. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do is look at the ascendant in any return chart. The ascendant here is Scorpio. And Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto. So Mars is here in the second house of finance, income possessions, conjunct the moon, which is real estate, home, family. And the uh, modern ruler of Scorpio is Pluto. And Pluto is here in the third house of contracts and communication. And it is making a very, very tight sextile to the sun in the fourth house of home family real estate. And it is also making a sextile to Jupiter. And Jupiter is in the first house of this return chart. And Jupiter is in 
Scorpio. And so now we're starting to see a bit of a storyline because remember, you're reading an, a, any return chart as a standalone chart, but you're going to take it in the context of the birth chart. So let's, let me bring this to life for you. Let's talk about what happened that year. So here's how the, uh, the Venus in the fifth house came to life. So let's talk about that first. First of all, let's just get the love stuff out of the way. Was there a love interest that year? Yes. Fifth house Venus. Did that love interest situation go well that year? No, it did not. It was complete rejection and it didn't work out at all. And that is reflected with the Venus square Saturn. Okay. So that's the extent of the love. The other, it, the other thing is that, you know, this Venus return chart was more about the financial wrap up of my divorce and the financial busyness of my life, relocating, buying a house. So that Venus square Saturn came out also, if you think about that, the seventh house is my ex-husband and there's going to be that, that crunch there. Okay, I had a deadline. I was required to move out of my home and buy a house and, and leave. Okay, that was a big deal after 22 years. Plus, here's the kicker. Even though I was entitled to a divorce settlement, I was not allowed to get one penny of that money until he had up to, I think it was 90 days after I moved out of the house to pay me. So what did that mean? That meant that for me to relocate, for me to buy a house, I had to do it completely on my own. And I could not rely on one penny of that money. And that was a very scary prospect for me, especially because I had to do it alone as an astrologer, as a self-employed person, and I had to qualify for a mortgage. This was very scary for me, but it was also very karmic and very empowering and necessary, ultimately. So here's how this started to play out. This Venus is next to the planet Mercury. Mercury in my, in my Venus return chart rules the eighth house, which is the house of investments, the house of other people's money. So this would rule the settlement that I was supposed to get that year. This is any money that you get from a source besides your own income. Now, here's where the fifth house comes in, in a more dynamic way as it relates to finance. The fifth house is a financial house. It is speculation, gambling. I didn't gamble to get the down payment for my home. I actually did very long-term strategic investing with a financial advisor. So for years from 2011, when my divorce was finalized until 2018, I did very strategic investing, very diligent long-term saving and planning because I knew that my divorce settlement was, it didn't even exist as far as I was concerned. I couldn't rely on it to buy a house. I needed to buy a house my, myself. So I had a plan for that. And there's the reflection of Venus square Saturn in the second house, because this is my money. And I invested money very long-term for those years. Eighth house, Mercury rules the eighth house. And it's next to Venus in this Venus return chart in the fifth house of speculation. And suddenly I had to completely drain every penny that I had invested and take a risk. Fifth house and buy my house and put the down payment on and pay for the closing costs. 
And this is a beautiful reflection of the Venus square Saturn and the fact that Mercury is square Saturn and Mercury is the ruler of the eighth and Venus and Mercury are both in the fifth house. And the Saturn is in the second house. So you see how this is opening up financially? Now, Saturn is the traditional ruler of the fourth house of home family real estate in this chart. And so this is, this chart gets even better, gets even more dynamic. The second house also has the moon and Mars conjunct, trine, Uranus, and Uranus is the modern ruler, the fourth house of home family real estate. So the moon, which rules real estate, is perfectly trine, Uranus, which is the ruler of the fourth house in this Venus return chart. And the symbolism there is that it was through my work that I ended up being able to buy this house, okay? But there was more frustration and delays, okay? So I'm actually gonna clear this for a second because it's getting too busy here now. And I wanna focus on more of the storyline and, uh, and, and draw the aspects as I tell the story. So this story, as it evolves, we've got Maria has to buy a house. Maria is gonna get a divorce settlement at some point, but it's not gonna be until 90 days after she moves out, up, up until 90 days after she moves. And she had to drain all of her investments. So all of that was ready to go. But there's another part to buying a house, guys. And that part is you've got to get a mortgage unless you're able to buy a house outright all cash. I was not. I had to secure a mortgage. That's an eighth house matter. So we're back to Mercury conjunct Venus. So if you think that getting a mortgage as a single self-employed person is easy, in New York especially, think again. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do financially. And what made it even more difficult was what I did for a living. I list astrologer on my tax returns every year, okay? I am an astrologer. Not many people list astrologer on their tax returns, but I do. And here I am now trying to get a bank to loan me money and, and to get a mortgage. Well, do you think that was easy? Holy cow. We're back now to the square between Venus and Mercury and Saturn. Obstacle number one. During this Venus return period, guys, I was rejected with my first mortgage application, completely rejected. And I was really getting scared. And I was thinking, okay, am I not gonna be able to buy this house? What am I gonna do? I have the money now. I, I'm showing you that I have the money. I was ready to put 20% down. I am a good buyer. I am a solid buyer. I have stable income. But they still rejected my application for a mortgage. So then <laughs> I also, thankfully, had another option. And I applied for a mortgage in a different way by using nothing but my tax returns. And uh, actually at that point, it was some, some kind of a, a program. I don't even know if it still exists in New York where they only needed my tax return for one year. And I had to show uh, all my money, I had to you know, qualify for the mortgage and I did. So by the grace of God, and because of my long-term diligent financial planning, I ultimately ended up getting approved for a mortgage. But first there was the rejection, Venus, Mercury, square Saturn. First there was the delay, Venus, Mercury, square Saturn. And so that was difficult. And I overcame that during the Venus return year. So then, I find a house and I go into contract. Yay. Well, 
the buyer pulls out of the contract and I lose my first house. So now I'm really freaking out because I thought I found the house and home in my dreams. I got everything in place. And now I'm back to square one. They pulled out of the contract and I had to go looking for a house all over again. All of this happened during this time period. So then I found this house, the home that I live in now. And interestingly enough, remember the love stuff, the Venus person who I'm not in a relationship with, who I was rejected. Uh, he actually later, came, that Venus return year, came back into my life and apologized to me for what had happened. And we became really good friends. And he wanted to make up uh, to me what, what he had done. And he really, really became a good friend. And he actually convinced me to pivot where I was looking for a home in the town and area in Long Island. And it is because of him that I chose this town that I live in now. And he helped me go house hunting. He not only helped me find the first house that, that I never got, he helped me find this house. He came to the home inspection for the other house that fell apart. And he came to the home inspection for this house. So as an aside, the love interest, the person that I wanted to be with who had rejected me, Venus Square Saturn, actually ended up doing something really nice to help me. And that was, that was very sweet. That all happened there. But I still didn't get the love relationship from him. Okay. But we're friends now. To this day, we're very good friends. So going on with the uh, story of now I have my house. Yay, now I have my house. Now I have my closing date, which was March 6th of 2019. So we are almost into the next Venus return chart now. You can see this Venus return chart definitely came alive, okay? So I closed on the house March 6th, 2019. And then what do you think happened? Wow, I went into three months of massive construction and renovations because this was my dream. This was my dream. I worked so hard for this. I wanted this home to be the, a beautiful sanctuary for me and my family. And I had the ability to not move into this house until the end of June of 2019 when my daughter graduated high school. So I said, let me take advantage of this. And while nobody's living in the house, let me do all the messy, loud, crazy construction that I possibly can do. And that's great because I work from home. So I, I didn't want to have to be living in that and trying to work in that. So now what, did I, what do I do? I'm broke. I don't have any money to do any of these renovations. Now, I did have a divorce settlement coming to me, but it wasn't in my bank account, wasn't in my hands. So all the money that was, that I had is now in this house, right? I had to drain my investments. I had one option. And what I did was I used my really, really incredible credit to strategically take out multiple credit cards at 0% interest rate for one year. And I charged everything, every bit of renovation work that I did for the three months, I charged and racked up an insane amount of credit card debt, which I had never done before in my life because I'm very financially responsible. I'm a tourist. So here we go again, fifth house, Venus, speculation, risk with money, connected to eighth house, credit. Venus conjunct Mercury, square Saturn, because I didn't have the cash, I didn't have the money, the second house, I borrowed it. I borrowed it from creditors, credit cards, multiple credit cards. And I racked up a shit ton of debt in a really, really short time. But I knew that as long as I got my divorce settlement, I would be able to pay all of that off as soon as uh, 
before any interest got charged. So that, my friend, is this Venus return chart. And I thought it was a spectacular example to give you to symbolize the power of Venus and, and a Venus return when it is a really, really big Venus year. Now, very quickly, because I know this video is going to be so long, I'm going to take you to the next Venus return chart, which occurred um, April 23rd, 2019. And we're not going to spend too much time on this, but because there is an overlap with the significant financial happenings, it, and, and because a new love situation developed that Venus return cycle, I have to spend a few minutes on this. This is like, you know, turning into Maria's life story soap opera. This is this planetary return video. So <laughs> I hope you're entertained, but I really hope you're learning something about the Venus return. I really, really hope you're learning something here. Okay, now this Venus return part happened after I had closed on my house. I closed on my house March 6th. This Venus return happened April 23rd. April 23rd, now we got all new Venus energy. Now I'm not gonna take you back to my natal chart, but I'm just gonna tell you very quickly the connections to the natal so that you can see. The angles here, my fourth house cusp, remember this is gonna be important because I moved that year and my 10th house cusp are reversed in my natal chart. So my, mid, my natal midheaven is 13 degrees Capricorn and my natal fourth house cusp of home family real estate is 13 degrees of cancer. So that is very noteworthy. When the angles on a planetary return chart mimic in any way your natal angles, it's going to be a big solar return, a uh, big, I keep saying solar return, I'm sorry, a big return year. In addition to that, I was born with Aries rising and um, Libra on the descendant. And again, they're reversed in this return chart. I have Aries on the descendant and Libra rising. So Venus is placed in my sixth house again, next to Mercury, conjunct Mercury again. And Venus in this return chart rules the eighth house. No surprise, husband's money, investments, credit. Okay, because I came into this Venus return with a lot of that going on. And Venus rules the chart, my ascendant. And here we go again with the moon being active in Sagittarius, which is my natal moon position, by the way. And both of these Venus return charts mimic my natal moon in Sagittarius. Of course, they move, big return year. So Venus was conjunct Jupiter in my third house of contracts, communication, neighborhood, neighbors, very happy time with all of that. And the fourth house, Saturn is conjunct fourth house cusp, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, that big Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn that we had, that was all about death and rotting flesh and letting something die so that something new can be reborn and loss for all of us was in my Venus return chart that year, the fourth house. And of course it was because after 22 years of living in one home, I left that home and moved into my new home, which I'm in right now. But let's get back to the, the uh, Venus part of the Venus return chart. So what's Venus doing here? Venus is hanging out in the sixth house, conjunct Mercury. And Venus rules my chart and Venus rules the eighth house. So I'm walking into this Venus return. What am I doing? I'm doing nothing but sixth house work. You know how many people I hired that year? You know how many contractors were in my house? You know how many men were on my roof, in my house, uh, in my, uh, everywhere, everywhere, okay? So that was going on. In addition to this, you can see how ultimately uh, I would have received the settlement Mon uh, money, eighth house, Con Venus conjunct Mercury, contracts, contract fulfilled there in the third house. And what did I do? I paid off all the debt. So that all happened within, uh, I want to say by August or September of this, Ven this Venus return cycle. Okay. Now let's talk about love with this Venus return cycle. Was it an important love year? Absolutely. Was it a good love year? I thought it was, turned into a shit show. But at this point, I was focused on my home and moving and all the money stuff that I had going on and all the insecurity and anxiety. I was not thinking about love. And 
I said, I would say to people, you know, for me to meet a guy, he literally is going to have to ring my friend from the bell because it's just not going to happen any other way. Well, be careful what you wish for. I'm telling you, because the person I met during this Venus return, I met because he literally rang my front door bell. And Venus is in the sixth house, conjunct Mercury. Sixth house is people that you employ. Mercury can rule siblings, but also neighbors. And my neighbor, what happened was, I was doing all this work and I was driving an hour back and forth almost every day to oversee the work and, and it was really chaotic. And I had uh, uh, my front lawn, the grass started to grow, right? Because now it's spring and, and I lived in Queens and I wasn't used to having to cut grass because I had all pavement. And here on Long Island, you gotta cut your grass. <laughs> so I had to hire a landscaper. Well, the first two landscapers that I hired stood me up. And at this point, I'm embarrassed because my neighbors are seeing that my front lawn looks like a jungle. And I'm like, wait, what am I going to find? You know, what am I going to do? So my neighbor who lives across the street from me said, um, hey, I know this guy, you know, he does my grass. Why don't I refer him? Blah, blah, blah. And so I called him. He came and cut my grass. And I was at my new house just doing some stuff and I had to pay him. And I'm, you know, I'm really diligent about if I owe you money, I got to pay you. So, so I said, I have to go back to Queens. Um, if you're around, if you could please stop by, I'm happy, happy to pay you. So he rang my bell. And that's how I met this guy, the love interest guy. And he literally lived in my neighborhood and he was my landscaper for a couple of years. And unfortunately, you can see the sun Uranus conjunction here in the seventh house of partnership. It was a sudden meeting and very exciting. And that year it was very exciting. And then the following year, it ended up completely falling apart into an, a complete shit show, which I won't get into. But uh, now that Venus return explained itself. So now the next Venus return, did I, I don't know if I pulled a 2020 Venus return. I might not have. No, I didn't. And this is getting really long now. So I think I'm just gonna skip to the current Venus return. The current Venus return is going to be our predictive Venus return. And here we are, it's happening today, tonight. So you cast your Venus return for your current location. Some people use the, um, the birth location for all return uh, charts. My birth location and my current location are very, not very far apart, about an hour away. So for me, it doesn't really matter. For clients, I still primarily use the current location when I cast their return charts. You see what works for you, uh, but, the, but the birth location really does work as well. So Venus is returning to its natal position tonight, and I will have a one-year brand new theme chart for all Venus ruled matters, and now we're going to make some fun predictions for Maria's Venus return cycle. So this may or may not turn into a remarkable Venus year. Stay tuned. I actually think that it is going to be very significant, uh, like it or not, ready or not, okay, because of multiple reasons astrologically. But let's, let's start with our analysis. So Venus, the condition of Venus. Venus is here in the third house, but Venus is on an angle. And when Venus is on an angle in your return chart, you know it's going to be a noteworthy Venus return year. When any return planet is angular in the return chart, it is a big symbolic message that it's going to be a big year for matters that are ruled by that planet. So right off the bat, like it or not, this is a big return year for me because Venus is conjunct the fourth house. It may or may not be connected to fourth house matters, but it will be significant. Now, Venus is in an out of sign conjunction to, to Jupiter. Jupiter is at the very end of Pisces. And Venus is making a sextile to Mercury in my sixth house. Okay, so those are the aspects that Venus is making in this chart, which is very nice. So far, so good. We don't have a, a tragic Venus story so far. We don't have any hardship, it seems. But let's look at some other issues here. What are we going to look at? The house is Venus rules. Venus rules the fifth house in this return chart. And Venus rules the 10th house in this return chart. So we know that fifth house matters and 10th house matters are going to be amplified 
in this Venus return cycle and that Venus sextile Mercury and Venus widely uh, at a sign conjunction to Jupiter are in effect connected to fifth and 10th house matters. The fifth house, let's look in this fifth house and here we go with that famous Sun Uranus conjunction. But before I go ahead and analyze it as anything negative or hard, I have to be objective and I have to look at what it's doing in the rest of the chart. And being true to the astrology, that Venus, I'm sorry, that Sun Uranus conjunction is sextile the moon, which is in my seventh house of partnership. The moon in the Venus return chart is exactly conjunct my fourth house cusp in my birth chart of home family real estate. So there is something coming up here that the fourth house, and it looks positive because with Venus being angular and the moon in this return chart being exactly conjunct my natal fourth house, I can't ignore that. That's, that seems kind of significant. Um, but back to the fifth house, the fifth house is also making a beautiful sextile to Mars. And Sun, Uranus, a sextile Mars. Mars is trying that moon. And Mars is the ruler of that fourth house. Okay, so there is something here with fifth house and fourth house that looks really important. And I believe it has to do with my children and some kind of major blessings connected to them because the fifth house is children. Can it involve a sudden love situation? Absolutely. Can it involve a sudden financial windfall connected to um, fifth house matters or, uh, and that, that would affect my fourth house living situation? It could. It absolutely could. I can't rule that out. The moon rules the eighth house. And there's a lot going on here. And right now I'm totally single and there is no love interest. So I'm analyzing this chart with my reality in mind, okay? So I'm looking at the possibilities here and making predictions. Can this bring a sudden new love interest? Yes, that's another possibility because of the fifth house energy. Venus does rule the fifth house and the fifth house planets are making a, a beautiful sextile to the moon, which is in the seventh house of partnership. And the ruler of the fifth Venus is sextile the ruler of the seventh. Venus is sextile Mercury here. That's the ruler of the seventh. In addition, the ascendant is conjunct my north node. The descendant is conjunct my natal south node in my, in my birth chart. So that's another important consideration. Okay, we have a lot of angularity in this Venus return chart. My north node is conjunct the ascendant and the south node is conjunct the descendant, which suggests a karmic relationship energy and a very karmic destined faded type of year with Venus ruled matters. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, let's see. As far as money goes, we have uh, the ruler of the second in the second. So Saturn rules the second house of, of finance and it's in the second house. And it's not really doing anything to the rest of the chart. It's not really making any major aspect. Uh, but Pluto is another planet in the second house and Pluto is making a beautiful sextile to Jupiter. And that's a really empowering financial aspect to have, I have to say, it's very, very positive. But let me clear this chart and go back to the fact that there's a lot going on in this third house. So it does look like what's gonna bring me pleasure, joy, beautiful matters, have a lot to do with third house matters. And I am really enjoying learning right now and teaching. So I'm you know, enrolled in a traditional astrology course. I'm learning Italian very slowly. <laughs> I am teaching a lot more, doing a lot more YouTube videos and uh, things like that. So this is all very reflected by the uh, Mars, Neptune, Jupiter energy and Pisces in the third house and the fact that Venus is in the third house, although it's on the angle. So I think money looks pretty stable. I think there's going to be some kind of very big blessing in my home and family life possibly connected to my children or connected to finances. And there could very well be an unexpected relationship with this Venus return cycle. And that 
is all I'm going to say about this Venus return chart. Now, what I will do is give you some pointers about how to time when all of these things are going to be happening in your return chart. You always want to look to see when the planet, so if this is a Venus return we're looking at, we're going to track the transits of Venus. The transits of Venus over the next year, over any of the angles of the Venus return, will symbolize important bursts of energy connected to Venus ruled matters. And the Venus ruled matters that are promised in that Venus return chart will be woken up when transiting Venus is conjunct any of the four angles. You can also look at when transiting Venus is conjunct any of the planets that are in your Venus return chart, because Venus is going to go completely around the chart in the one year cycle, it's about one year. And that can bring a burst of activity. So you want to look and see, well, what's going to happen? Maybe, maybe what's going to time it is I have, I have the sun conjunct Uranus in my fifth house of romance. Okay. So when transiting Venus, is conjunct in that sun Uranus conjunction in Taurus in my fifth house, that could be when I meet someone. That could be when there is that sudden windfall financial blessing that happens, or when there's some sudden positive news connected to one of my kids. Okay, that's just an example for timing. So you guys get the idea. All right, this has been a long instructional video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, again, I always talk about my life because I really think that it helps to bring astrology to life for you as a learning tool. And, and I hope that it helps you learn and grow and understand your astrology more. And uh, I hope you all have many happy Venus returns. I am going to do everything I can to make mine amazing. <laughs>